Today, the rocky wonder of the canyon attracts sightseers from all corners of the globe. But what few people realize is there's a whole other world right beneath their feet. Oh, that's good, actually, yeah. Today, I'm joining a group of scientists heading underground. So yes, everybody going underground is going to be making sure their bladders are empty. To a spot where no camera crew has ever been before. You can't pee or poop underground, and yes, we have a pee bag in case somebody missed it. Wow. Our mission is to head 215 feet down into a cave formed millions of years ago by acidic groundwater dissolving the limestone into a honeycomb of cavities, where the team have discovered strange life forms. Hang on, the lights have gone. It's going all dark in here. Into the blackness, into the wild cave. Get past the tourist bit, then. Apparently, more people have stepped on the moon than in some parts of this cave. And as we go on, I begin to see why. Wow, this is tight. This is not my cup of tea at all. Oh, hang on. I'm, you're going to have to wait, wait for me a second. I am not. I've got to tell you, I'm not at all comfortable with this. I thought we were... I thought the tight space was further ahead. This feels already very tight to me, and quite um, claustrophobic and... Uh, well, go on, go on, go on, go on, I'll carry on, go on, we'll carry on. There's a bigger spot ahead. OK. How are you feeling about your life choices? <laughs> That's tight. Finally, there's room to sit upright and catch my breath. Thank you very much. So the bit that you collect the samples from is tighter than that? Yeah. Yeah, it's right through there. I'm not doing it. OK. That's as tight as I want to get. That's, that's too much. Hopefully, we can get out again, because I have a very special trip planned. As we go back into the canyon. KUTO 102.5 FM. Traffic is building across the park this Labor Day weekend with queues of up to two hours expected. It's the last busy holiday weekend of summer at the Grand Canyon, but I'm not out in the sunshine. I'm in the tiniest and deepest space I've ever seen on a scientific expedition. <sighs> That's tight. Uh, so can you get the samples? Yes. OK, so we look at the cables. You happy to sit here with me? Yeah, yeah. No, it sounds good. Excellent. Yeah. While the team go further in to collect a sample, microbiologist Brad Lusk can tell me more about the project. So is this your first cave? Yeah, yeah, literally, and, and it yeah. was horrible. Yeah, this, this was the first cave that I ever came in. I remember coming through this space thinking the same thing, like this is the narrow part, and then getting here and seeing this room in the crawl space that they're going through now and thinking, this is the dumbest thing I've ever done. <laughs> But for Brad and the team, the pain is worth it, as they're discovering new forms of life here. Tiny microbes and bacteria that survive even though these caves have not seen water for 17 million years. This is a dry cave. Nothing should really live here, right? Yeah, the microbes that are down here, they consume things that are in the cave walls, and they can essentially breathe some of the metals that are associated with the cave down here. Wow. This has, like, blown my mind a little bit. So okay. there are life forms down here that can breathe metal and eat rock. Yes. So the first life forms on Earth that were breathing were likely breathing rocks. So breathing rocks came long before breathing oxygen did. And we're kind of catching a glimpse of that ancient respiratory process down here. The team already have high hopes of harnessing this prehistoric superpower. All of this is the corrosion residue. This is where the bacteria have been eating the rock. So we can use microbes like the ones you find in the cave for doing things like getting rid of uranium contamination or even helping to clean up sites where we've done mining historically in the past, so, or mining that's ongoing now. Wow. 
I think that's the coolest thing in the world. You're finding kind of new life forms that we don't know about, and yeah. those might have the properties to heal the world. I kind of, I, that's, that's been worth crawling up a horrible hole. Yeah. And having discovered hundreds of these things. Hey, Nick, we're back. Who knows what else they might be able to do? Can we see the sample? Can I see sample? Okay. Yeah, please. So in that shot glass could be a new form of bacteria that could do amazing things that we haven't discovered yet. Yeah. I think you're slightly nuts, but what you're doing is mind-blowingly amazing. Yeah, it takes some nuts to save the world.